When we design our products, we know that um, um, that cortical change is driven through activity-driven processes, and uh, we know that frequency and intensity of uh, use of the product, but also frequency and intensity of the uh, of the trials that a student experiences in that learning environment are critical for uh, driving uh, neural change and neuroplasticity. So we intentionally design our products to produce high rates of uh, trials, of learning opportunities. Um, we also know that motivation is a critical component to learning and that really the neuromodulatory systems that come into play in uh, neuroplasticity and in learning in general operate on the order of tens of milliseconds and by that I mean when you have a learning opportunity and a successful um, experience um, the reward associated with um, having a successful learning trial needs to occur within tens of milliseconds of that decision process in order to maximize uh, the opportunity for synaptic change. Uh, so we intentionally uh, design our products to have uh, rapid reward sequences that quickly follow uh, learning trials. We don't have much uh, in the way of motivation or fun or excitement for kids uh, when they make a mistake or at other uh, periods during, during the learning process. Um, which we feel um, has a, that design has a significant uh, impact on the rates of learning. Uh, some of the other things that we do is we have uh, the ability to track <clears throat> and monitor uh, an individual student's learning performance and change what they're exposed to on a, a trial by trial basis based on uh, their performance on the previous trial. So we're able to rapidly <clears throat> adapt uh, what the child experiences in a, in a learning situation so that we're constantly tracking um, and moving uh, them on to more uh, difficult content material, which again helps optimize the, the learning process because if you stay in an area where you're quite successful, it's too easy, it becomes boring. On the other hand, if you move too rapidly into material that's too difficult where you're not successful very frequently, then it becomes too hard, it becomes frustrating, and um, you don't really optimize um, the opportunity for learning and for producing uh, brain change. So um, those are some of the ways in which we uh, build in the principles of uh, neuroscience in, into all of our products. Um, and some other things that we do is we, um, in, in, when we're designing product, um, we don't just take the simplest component or the most complex component. We understand that <clears throat> most meaningful behaviors require a complex set of cognitive uh, activities. And you can work on pieces of those uh, complex cognitive skills in isolation, uh, just like you would if you're a football player or a basketball player or a golfer. You can go out and work on pieces of uh, your game. You can w lift weights to become stronger with your arms or your legs or better at putting, better at uh, hitting the ball uh, long distance and, and driving and so on. So uh, much like that practicing the different components that make up a more complicated uh, skill set, we build that into our uh, exercises and, and products as, as well. So you'll work on things in a, maybe a more simple way and build up to using, um, uh, using that, that same material in a more complex um, uh, situation.